Hello, welcome to a scarlet edition of, Bu of Buckeye TV's Campus View. I'm your host, Jay Baldwin, and thanks for joining us. We have an exciting show for you today. We will find out what's on the minds of Ohio State students as we discuss the big topics on and off campus. Let's meet our first group of students. Um, I'd like you guys to please introduce yourself and give us um, your favorite sport and uh, your grade level. Yeah, I'm Micah Flack. I'm a fourth year here at Ohio State. My favorite sport is soccer. I grew up playing it and enjoy watching it a lot. Uh, my name is Sam. Uh, I'm a senior here at Ohio State. I, uh, my favorite sport is definitely basketball. I have played it all throughout my life. I love the Aaron Kraft and Jared Sumlinger days of Ohio State. That was oh. definitely my favorite heyday. My name is Noah Weisskopf. Uh, I'd probably say football has got to be the favorite, especially here at Ohio State. Powerhouse year in, year out. You always got something good to root for. All right, thank you guys. And uh, speaking of football, our first topic is actually going to be the Buckeyes football team who had a 56-0 victory over Western Michigan this past Saturday at the Shoe. Um, boys, what do you think about that victory? Uh, who wants to start? You want to start, Noah? Yeah, well, first of all, just total dominance, right, by Ohio State. The week before, they started off, their first half was pretty slow. Right, they wanted to get off to a better start, a hotter start, uh, get some rhythm early, but their goal going into week two is to get going early, and they sure did. Right? Will Howard looked sensational in the first half. Um, the rushing attack finally got their feet under themselves. They got into a rhythm. The offensive line was out there throwing blocks for them, so offense totally looked dominant, and nothing against the defense. They looked just as dominant. Right? They have not allowed a team in the red zone yet this season. I know they're playing math teams, but... It's a really good start for a season that they're hoping they go really far in. Yeah, and I want to bring that up. We're talking about Will Howard and his dominant performance. He's put up these past two games, to be honest. Um, he's, seen, he's a transfer student coming in, um, new guy from Kansas State. We, don't, we haven't seen much of him in the two weeks. And like you said, we play, only play Mac schools. Once we get to those bigger games, Oregon's are, you know, probably our biggest game this season. Um, what do you expect to see from him? Uh, I want to get you guys' opinion on Will Howard as well. He seems to be a polarizing figure right now. You know, Will Howard, he, what, one of the things that's really impressed me about him is how poised he is in the pocket. He really feels comfortable back there, and that also has to give credit to the offensive line. They've looked much better compared to last year. That was definitely one of the weakest points of the 2023 roster. Um, also, Will Howard just hasn't made very many mistakes. That was one thing that Kyle McCord had issues with sometimes last year, where he would throw turnovers and it would cause, you know, obviously major like influx for the Ohio State offense. Uh, versus Will Howard, he's been very smart with the ball, hasn't been putting the ball in harm's way, giving his receivers a chance to get it while also not giving defensive backs an opportunity to make a play on it. And what about you, Micah? And it's been a good job with Will Howard. He has that ability, unlike Kyle court to really extend the pocket. He yeah. go outside, be able to run with his legs, but also a great thing for him that has also helped him not to have those mistakes. You have a great running back group. Chip yes. Kelly comes in as the new offensive coordinator. You know he's going to run as much as he possibly yeah. can. <clears throat> you have Chip Trainum, or excuse me, not Chip Trainum, but you have Travion Henderson and Quid Sean Junkins who are there in the backfield. And then, of course, Jeremiah Smith. And he's been able to really be poised and settle into this offense. It's been a great job with Ohio State these past couple weeks. Yeah, I know. Speaking about the run attack, um, Quinshawn Junkins, transfer student from Ole Miss, probably the running back of the season last year, competing with uh, Oklahoma State's Ollie Gordon. Um, he comes in and won Big Ten player, or excuse me, he won Ohio State's player of the game um, this past Saturday. Um, as a transfer student coming in and doing that is amazing. Um, for the season, him and Travion Henderson as the dual uh, backfield um, look to really be the best dual backfield ever almost seriously almost putting up a thousand yards each maybe I don't know so we'll see how that goes yeah. uh, I mean just that's the expectation right like you bring in a guy like Quinshawn Junkins and it's a surprise when a guy like that wants to transfer to Ohio State especially considering you've already got a Travion Henderson a first team all big Ten type player and then you get another guy at that level that wants to come and share the workload. That's something special that a lot of kids, especially in college, don't have that mindset. And for them to have the mindset of just wanting to connect here, want to get better together, and they just don't, Ryan Day talks about all the time, they don't have an ego, right? Like they just want each other to get better. They just want to get wins for the team. And having a dual rushing attack like that with those two guys, I mean, they're probably the best duo in the country, and that's going to take them really, really far, especially to keep one of them having you know not having to be in the game at all times right like they have one of them that's going to be able to keep fresh legs so when you hit the fourth quarter and you want to run the ball you're going to have one of those guys that are going to be fresh yeah i know and um speaking of uh 
Ryan Day, um, his record with the team up north, as we all know, has been really criticized this offseason. He is 0-3. Uh, he looks to go in and get his first win this season. Speaking of that team, though, fortunately, or not fortunately, but fortunately for the Buckeyes, they lost to Texas this weekend up in Ann Arbor at home. It seemed like a dominating win for Texas. People have Ohio State and Texas on the same caliber. So I wonder what you guys feel about heading into that week uh, closer to Thanksgiving, how that this game versus Texas is going to affect Michigan. Well, first of all, I wanted to give props to te Texas because they look absolutely phenomenal uh, during their contest against Ex Michigan. Buckeye, Quinn Ewers. Yes, Quinn Ewers was fantastic. Uh, he was able to put the ball out of harm's way. He didn't make mistakes. Uh, one thing that really impressed me was his ability to drive the ball down the field. Uh, the Texas offense wasn't really uh, striking on very many big plays, but it, it, it definitely takes something when you can drive a team all the way down the field because when it comes playoff time, the defense gets much, much tougher than you might typically see. Michigan's defense is very good, although he kind of just yeah. was able to yeah. walk all over them. Yeah. So um, we could talk about football all day, all day guys. Um, I want to talk about some other Buckeye sports that happened uh, this past weekend or this past week, uh, starting with men's soccer. Um, they actually... Uh, they actually beat Xavier 3-1 uh, to one at uh, home at the Jesse Owens Memorial Stadium this uh, September 8th. And uh, they're still unbeaten. And then they also, um, no, they just beat Xavier. So, yeah, they're still unbeaten. Um, coach Mazinov, is, this is his strongest start so far as a Buckeye coach. And um, it looks like we're actually going to maybe do something this year in soccer. Um, same with women's. They're also ranked. Men's are now ranked 12th, jumped up from 21st to 12th. And the women's are now ranked 21st. You can correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, what does that mean for the soccer department, who OSU hasn't really been a big soccer school recently? Well, I'll say they've been out to a really, really good start. Um, they got a lot of players. They got a couple guys that are older in terms of being able to just take over the team, right, like be a leader on that team. They've got some freshmen that have been making an impact. But I know Micah has been covering a little bit of soccer here, so I know that he has some expertise in that as well. So, Micah, what have you seen from, from them? Well, they've been phenomenal. They take a lot of shots regardless of if they're on goal. But they beat a Xavier team who beat, at the time, Marshall. number two yeah. Marshall, who Literally. is one of the best teams in the country. And there's a lot of question marks going into the season. Brian Mazinoff had a really tough year, and then previous, before that in 2022, made it all the way to the NCAA tournament. But they brought back pretty much everyone from a team that was injury riddled a season ago. David Jagby, one of the top players on this Ohio State Buckeyes team, as they have been phenomenal. I agree. And um, yeah, thank you guys for coming in and talking about the Buckeye sports. We are uh, out of time, unfortunately. I know we could go all day, but you guys were wonderful. Um, uh, catch us after the break, and we'll talk about some of your favorite mascots. Ever wonder what is beyond the Ohio State campus area in downtown Columbus? Ever wanted to see one of the largest collections of early television equipment in the world? Well, Columbus Connection has you covered, as we head to some of the go-to destinations on the west side of Columbus to give you the ultimate Columbus Connection. We'll see parks, museums, bars, arcades, and some popular restaurants. All this and more on the next episode of Columbus Connections, exclusively on Buckeye TV. Welcome back to Buckeye TV. Um, I'm your host again, Jason Baldwin. And for our next segment, we're going to talk about the Buckeye. And when I say the Buckeye, I do not mean the candy. I mean the mascot. I got a panel of three guests here. Um, I want them to introduce ourselves. And we're going to go by one by one and hear their interesting take on what they think the Ohio State mascot should be, if not a Buckeye. Uh, my name is Tommy Hudak. I'm a fourth year here at Ohio State. Been a lifelong Buckeye fan, so it'll be cool to talk about, you know, what it could have been otherwise. My name is Lena Hinnickel. Um, I've gone here for four years now, and I have some strong opinions about who I think the next mascot for Ohio State should be. Interesting. My name is Paige McBain. I'm a fourth year here at Ohio State, and I kind of like the Buckeyes, so it's going to be difficult for me to come up with something else. Well, I heard, the I heard Paige actually knows the history of how we got our mascot. Um, I'd like her to actually explain that before we get into the Yeah. Changes. So for people who don't know, the Buckeye mascot came to be, um, I think it was in the 60s, I want to say. So it was the cheerleading squad and they didn't have a mascot. And this woman, she was a cheerleader and she was like 
why don't we have a mascot? Like, we should have a mascot. Right. And so they created a Buckeye because it was just the state nut. And so they just decided to use that. Yeah. And they created it out of paper mache in one of like the front of one of the houses, like one of the cheer houses. So they created this giant paper mache buckeye, and its eyebrows could move up and down. And back then, the security in the shoe was not as much as it is today. So they snuck the buckeye into the stadium, and then when the cheer when the cheer team was coming out to start doing their cheers, they just put the buckeye onto one of the male cheerleaders. And the crowd loved it, and everyone went crazy, and they kept bringing it back, bringing it back, and then they all, they just kept altering it, and it became what it is today. So in a lot of the alumni games, they do bring back the old Buckeyes. If you want to see them, they're usually other games, but they've gone through a lot of evolution. So that's how it came to be. Thank you so much. That was a very interesting uh, take. I did not know that. Um, Tommy, you want to start with a... Uh... Yeah, definitely. So, you know, the, the character or, or mascot I've chosen is kind of something that's been ingrained into uh, like a particular time of Ohio State lore, I guess. Around 2016, um, Ohio State students, you know, walking around Mirror Lake to their classes might have seen just a very unique crested peaking duck, which is, it looks like a regular duck, and but it's got this really like crazy like fro of hair going, and they called it Afro Duck. It became kind of like a big staple of campus. It became like a, a viral meme for a little bit here on campus. A lot of people connected with it, and um, they would take a picture of it as they passed by Mirror Lake. It was, just, it was just a fun part of people's days. Eventually, that duck unfortunately passed away. And then kind of to honor the life and uh, symbol of Afro duck, they stuffed it and now it's shown in the Museum of Biological Diversity here at Ohio State. So I really think, you know, being the Ohio State Afro ducks, we have a unique mascot as it is. And I think it would be really cool to, you know, set ourselves apart again if we were try trying to find something else. Um, you know, we have another Ducks now in the Big Ten, so, you know, we kind of want to compete with them, kind of be better than them, show them who's boss. Um, and some people that went there around that time kind of have adopted it as sort of a symbol of Ohio State secondary to Brutus Buckeye. I know, for example, there's an all-alumni-founded game developer, video game developer I've covered in the past called Afro Duck Studios, and they really took inspiration from the uniqueness of that mascot and the, um, just the fun, uh, happy memories that brought to Ohio State students here um, around that time. So, yeah, I think that would be a great unique switch up if we ever had to change from classic Bruce Buckeye. Right. Now, first of all, Tommy, I like to say RIP to Afro Duck. Absolutely. He will always. be missed, seriously. Second of all, what's your fascination with ducks or is it just Afro Duck or? I just think it was, oh, if we're looking for a new mascot for Ohio State, a school that has such long tradition and history here, we should start by looking at ourselves, the university, characters or figures or kind of cult classics that have popped up in our own history. So I think rather than looking at our state as a whole, look inward and see kind of important factors to Ohio State and kind of a sign of the times. If, if we're doing it now, this is kind of a more recent thing in our time and it's something that we can you know, talk about for generations after. That'd be a very interesting change <laughs> to the mascot, I would say. Um, I just have our next guest. Go ahead, explain her. Oh, yes. So um, I have some firm opinions about how I feel about the new Ohio State mascot. And I would just like to say that I think we should be the Ohio State astronauts. Um, well, as you know, we have our namesake, Neil Avenue, named after Neil Armstrong. True, well, I didn't we, know that actually. Yeah, <laughs> we, also <laughs> have, like, wow. we also have like the John Glenn building of public affairs. He's an astronaut as well. Also, also an astronaut, that is Glenn Powell and hidden figures for those of you who don't know. But okay. um, <laughs> something new every day. Yeah, um, but I just feel very strongly about the astronaut. It's cool, first of all. Can't disagree with that. Yeah, second of all, like to contribute so much to space and our time on the moon, that is something we should celebrate. And as Ohio State students, we would look so awesome Walking around with giant space helmets. Yeah, I'm thinking the, the football team's helmets could be. You oh, know, astronauts it'd be so too. sick. That and you could get cool. you could get so creative with it. You know, astronauts look so different, have looked so different throughout the years. You got your classic sixties astronaut to your modern day astronauts. And just like think about it like it's it's universal. Everyone knows what an astronaut is. Yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> and no one knows what a buckeye is. Exactly. Unless I will you go say that, to school yeah. here. I mean, That's okay. My take. My first question, I have a lot of questions. Yeah. My first question is, are you, is there an astronaut major? Are you, do you want to be an astronaut when you grow up? Or is this just something that you, you feel know, strong I, about? I really tossed that around yeah. growing up, being an astronaut. Sure. Yeah. Um, 
Unfortunately, I get motion sickness very easily. That's and ironic. Also, I think there might be some like constraints. I might be too short. Okay. I also might be too blind as well. I wear contacts. <laughs> All right, well, those um, are good reasons. Um, thank you for that. Uh, I'd like to talk to our last guest, Paige, about what she would like to change the Buckeye to. So I did some debating, some inner, I had some inner conflict right. on what I would choose. And when, with all sincerity, I would choose the Skyline Chili Cheese Dog to be <laughs> our next mascot. <laughs> if you think about it. Dive, please. People are so passionate about this food item. You have the hot dog, you have the chili, you have the cheese. All together, chili cheese dog. Just the costume just goes straight up and down. We have the little hot dog races like they do at the baseball <laughs> games. And you know what? Who cares about Dime a Dog? We're going to create this to be a football thing. And everyone's going to love it. And then you know what? Attendance at the, at the baseball games are going to skyrocket. Because you not only get hot dogs at the games, you get to take a picture with... Chili the mascot. <laughs> chili the mascot. Chili, okay. Chili. I really. Would really bring people together. I really love that idea, Paige. I'm not gonna lie. Out of everybody's idea, you probably had the best one. Um, sorry guys, I'm not gonna. <laughs> you guys can't beat the chili dog. But yeah. Um, so uh, we're gonna go to break now. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you guys for coming in today. We're gonna have a break, and Buckeye Team will be back soon. Before Lincoln Lie was able to look like this, it started from this. From the moment Mr. Lowry walked through the doors at Gehanna, he wanted to establish a new culture. It was a whole new world for us. And it's safe to say that at first, it was a little rough. And to see what Lincoln Live has become over the past five years is incredible. Let this program be an example that anything is possible, so long as you run faster, work harder, and have fun. Welcome back to Buckeye TV. Um, for our next segment, uh, we have a new segment. I'm going to title it myself. It's going to be called, What's Going On on Buckeye Students' Minds? Today we have three wonderful ladies with me. Um, I'm going to let them introduce themselves and give them their year and uh, major here at the school. Hi, my name is Devin Levin. I am a junior and I'm a communications major. Hi, I am Talia Moses. I am a senior and I'm also a communications major. Hi guys, I'm Cameron and I am a sophomore here and I'm a marketing major. All right, and Cameron is also the producer of our show, so everybody give her an applause for such a wonderful job she did. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So before the show, during the break, we had a lot to talk about, so I'm going to let the ladies talk about what they wanted to talk about. They seemed very passionate about it, so I'm going to start with you, Cameron. You okay. seem <laughs> Yes, I'm very passionate about what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, if you have been anywhere on TikTok, social media, or any platforms, you'll know about Brat Summer, okay? Basically, Brat is an album released by Charlie XCX, um, a pop artist, and it's basically kind of an EDM pop style um, album that completely revolutionized uh, TikTok trends and just my ears in general. Is that um, the Apple? Sorry, is that the Apple? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay, I think okay, the okay, Apple. Okay. Right. <laughs> I see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mars, see, yeah. everyone knows about it, okay? Um, and anyways, I've been obsessed with that album, and today, actually, or yesterday, Charlie just announced that she's releasing another add-on to the album. Deluxe? Uh, deluxe. I think it's titled, like, Brat, but it's different or I saw know. like the it's it was like spelled like backwards heard. yeah 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 so we'll see and also in her album there's been so many cameos from different artists so I'm really excited to see who else will be on it because you know they've had Billie Eilish who else has she Troye had? Sivan Troye Sivan yeah. and they're also coming to Columbus too okay 
So Lord, that, Lord oh my gosh, wow. that, that song changed my life. Um, so I'm really excited to see what that album is going to be like. And that's what's been on my mind. Not, unfortunately, accounting and my other classes haven't been. So. Okay. okay, now let me ask you this question because me and some guests back home might be confused about the term brat. Okay. Um, am I using this term right? I had a bratty summer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 listen. Explain, yeah, give me the Urban Dictionary. So when I think of bratty, I think of like a little kid, right. like crying because their mom's not letting them have candy in the supermarket. But brat, it's like a way of, it's a lifestyle. It's a way of being. Can I, can I respond? Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I did some research on brat summer oh, this summer. Okay. And um, actually, Charlie XCX likes to think of it as the combination of like coquette, like the bows, while also being really trashy. Um, I'd like to think of it as like a cigarette wrapped in a bow, like wow. dirty girl, like but like cleanish. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Like, well, I was gonna say like you don't brush your teeth that night. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, no, like dirty girl, like going <laughs> yeah. to the club, like right. the club you're staying at till five a.m. and you're okay. having fun. But you're yeah. still like, but we still brush little, our teeth. But like still like little pink bow. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay. like at the club at five a.m. Exactly. Yeah. Like I'll be walking through campus and I'm like listening to this, like acting like I'm like a supermodel, but in reality I'm a you know a student yeah. in sweats. It's so class. confusing sometimes. I feel it's like so girl. confusing to be a girl. <laughs> when exactly. I get asked, like, did you have brat summer? I feel like that strictly means, did I, like, go out all the time? Did I enjoy myself? Did I, like, put myself first? I feel like that's when I think of brat is, like, putting yourself first. Um, and I want to ask. You brat this summer? I was, I was not a brat this summer. <laughs> I had resume building summer. Oh. Okay, yeah, yeah. But I'd say that, like, Brad Summer is kind of like you go to sleep in your makeup and you wake up the next day and you don't fix it. Right. Yeah. I could also argue that it's a way of being. It's a way of thought. Yeah. It's a, it's a way you think about everything that happens to you and uh, you don't, you can be, anyone can be a brat. Sounds like a movement. You, it is. Yeah. Do you think like brat's a word that the older generation will never understand because we can't explain it enough? Like it's kind of like wig. Like I can't yeah. explain like, wig. it. I think it's different because I think yeah. it I think still it's wig. comes with the idea of like everyone knows what it's like to be yeah. a bratty child yeah. Yeah. and I think Charlie XCX is just normalizing it as an adult like oh, you're I allowed totally to like that. do whatever you want and complain and get what you want when you want it and I think it's specifically for like women too sometimes because I think like a lot of the times in like movies and different music genres women are so put together they're perfect they're wrapped up with a bow but you know what sometimes we're dysfunctional and a mess and sleeping with your makeup on we do sleep with our makeup on and I think that's celebrated in the new brat album and I think that's why yeah. it's also been such a movement and then also not to touch on one, not to make this entire segment about brat but she released a new song called girl so confusing and it was about the the artist lord yeah. and they had some drama going on and then all of a sudden Lord dropped a remix where she got on the song. Where they it, worked it out on the remix. Where they worked it out on the remix, and it oh. kind of talked about like female friendships. See, yeah. Drake and Kendrick can never. No, do right, yeah, no. Uh, that is that is very interesting. I yes. love what Charlie is doing. I have a few friends yes. that go to U, Columbia, and Chicago, and that is really? the hot spot for Charlie, I heard. Going out <gasps> oh. to those clubs. I'm jealous, I'm going jealous. Out to the, yeah, going out to all the bars. That's where started. Yeah, this will no. be the hot spot next week. Yeah, yeah. okay. Here. And before we move on, I'd just like to ask, uh, how could I? How could I brat myself? Ooh, I think you're kind of bratty like right now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think like the jewelry's shirt. bratty, the shirt's bratty. The, oh, the jewelry is definitely yeah, it's bad. giving. It's Your shoes are giving granola a little bit. Okay. Yeah, uh, the Boston. I can't take them off. They're molded to my foot. The uh, black. I got the black, black, the khaki, the green. Like. Okay. Yeah, but like I feel like brat. not caring when you go out and just like mm. enjoying yourself without any cares yeah. is like so bratty. I need the brat. I agree. It's about going out and having fun with your friends. You're not trying to find a man or woman or anyone. One. You're going out there to have fun and dance and sing. Stay out till 5 a.m. Exactly. And then go home and eat cold pizza. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. So we have about you know a couple minutes left in this segment. We're going to uh, talk about last night the VMAs happened. I know you guys Ooh. watched. Yay. And we're going to talk about actually one of the most interesting choices. Uh, Song of the Summer was given to Sabrina. You, have, you already have your hand I have something to say about that. <laughs> Song of the Summer was given to Sabrina Carpenter no. quite controversially. No. It would express it quite controversially <laughs> over... Song of the Year, or Song of the Year, Fortnite by Taylor oh, Swift I featuring Post Malone, this. one song of the summer. And wait, so Song of the Year? That. Sorry, Song of the Year was Espresso. Espresso. Okay, Agreed. so yeah, Song that of the Year, sense. Espresso by Sabrina Carver, which has been pretty controversial, I'd say, at least on Twitter. I would, from what I've seen, I don't know about you oh. guys. We probably have two different Twitters. <laughs> X. We probably have, <laughs> we probably have two different uh, for yous on there, but. Uh, I mean, I I would like to speak more on Song of the Summer. I totally agree with Espresso being the Song of the Year. I'd put out Not Like Us. My dad, 
my dad would say that it's a little early to be picking Song of the Summer, but what I have to say about Fortnite being Song of the Summer is that, no, it's not. I didn't even hear it. It was Brat Summer. It, it should have been Brat Guess Summer. featuring Should've Billie been. Eilish. Yeah. yeah. That, was, that changed lives. Okay. Um, and I just think that although Taylor Swift is great, I think that Fortnite deserves some awards. I don't think that if you look back at Summer 2024 that Fortnite is the song you're thinking of. And I think that's really what Song of the Summer is about. All right. All right, thank you guys. Um, uh, ooh, thank you guys for having me. <laughs> sorry, sorry, pardon me. Thank you guys for coming on. You guys were wonderful up here talking about the brat summer and whatnot. Um, Buckeye TV will be back, or Buckeye TV? Sorry, I don't know. I don't know what to say. We can't edit. We'll be back. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for stopping in tonight. Buckeye TV will be back tomorrow. Stay bratty. Stay bratty. <laughs>